a girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Hotter, and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. We've been talking about, of course, what are we talking about? We're always talking about electric vehicles now. This is the this is the buzzword in the car business. You could come up with a brand new internal combustion engine, Chuck, that put out zero out the tailpipe, and you would not get recognition. You know what I was thinking? I, I seems like I joined your show at just the right time. If I would have joined you years ago, we'd have, what would we be talking about? Oh my God, there was still plenty to talk. Well, about. Well, there's plenty to talk. We talked Takata airbags, but oh God, We're still talking about Takata airbags. GM's ignition gate. Yeah, I'm still talking about airbags. Uh, now it's rear view cameras. Every car's got a rear view camera problem. They need to use better glue. Uh, better glue. Oh yeah, we have forgot about the European cars with the roofs flying off. Oh God, There's, that's you know it's just never stops in the car business. And you remember we talked last was it week before last? We talked about the tax uh, the the credit thing for the manufacturer. Right. And the uh, emissions and all this other stuff. And the people with the hydrogen cars did not get the forms and everything to fill out in time. So only electric vehicles qualified for this latest rebate or whatever it is. And I said, that sounds stinks of the government to me. Well, here, are you ready for this? The a new administ- this administration has, as expected is making up a 12 making up to 12 billion dollars available billion would it be for automakers to retrofit their facilities to make electric vehicles and hybrids under the administration's signature inflation act nothing about solid uh, hydrogen the funding comes amid tense negotiations between the Detroit Three and the UAW, which we're going we're oh, yeah. to touch on later. Plenty to talk about there. <laughs> and the transition to electric vehicles threatens union jobs, they think. It includes $10 million in newly announced funds. Where are they coming up with? They just keep printing money. The U.S. Energy Department loan program for clean vehicles. The Energy Department also said it's planning to make available, excuse me, Make available an additional 3.5 billion in financing to expand domestic battery manufacturing for vehicles and nation and the nation's power grid. 10 billion for more cars and batteries, but only 3.5 billion for the charging infrastructure and the nation's power grid. You tell me. U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm vowed Thursday the U.S. wouldn't leave American auto workers behind. Oh, no. We're going to stick it to you is what we're going to do. Telling reporters that the funding will support projects in longstanding automaking communities to help retain workers amid the transition. Does that sound like a propaganda to you, Chuck? I just don't like the way that's even worded. Right. I, why, why, and besides that, why is the government putting $12 billion into private enterprise? Well, this becomes a question of playing favorites. This becomes a question of, um, you know, government deciding the winners and the losers, which is not that that's not how capitalism works. That's not how free market free enterprise works. You're no, supposed that, to let the people it, it, like I've always said about electric vehicles. I love the concept of electric vehicles. Let, let the market too. let the market decide. Elon now has one of the biggest car manufacturers out of nowhere. Elon's gone from, you know, producing a handful of cars to one of the biggest manufacturers. Oh, yeah. Because there's, nobody's forcing them. Maybe some people are taking advantage of the credits, but people are buying those cars. And they're mostly buying his. And they're mostly buying his. So, again, just let the free market decide. If, if 10% want to buy electric cars, if 20%, let them buy it and let the other people buy what they want to buy. Well, my dad always told me years ago when I was a kid growing up, government money means government control. Right. And I don't care for that. Well, and remember, even going back to you mentioned the, the the big three bailouts and things like that. There was a lot of strings attached to that, right? And I mean, you have to you at least there was. you have to at least acknowledge that when the the union that the UAW gives a lot of money to a certain party, 
And that certain party is dangling, you know, carrots over the manufacturer in the middle of a very tense debate. It, it again, it's it's not, you know, it's it's anti free market. You're you're supposed to just sit back and let the you know government shouldn't be getting involved in, in strict negotiations. Besides or like that, that the, all this huge change, you're talking about taking our automobile industry, turning it upside down, and starting over. Right. And you haven't even tried to do anything with what we have. I right. mean, they they don't want they want they well, want all this gone. See, no, that's not true though, because in the last couple of decades. They've had like refineries, for instance, have spent billions upon billions of dollars. Our local refineries spent billions of dollars on pollution control and making the process cleaner and making oh, it more. Absolutely. In- so, I mean, that whole process, you know, they always attack oil and coal. They've spent billions of dollars because of government. And you've mentioned it all the time about how the cars have gotten more efficient. They, how they, they basically have zero emissions as it is. Yeah. So and, and that's because of 50 years of, of progress but, but and then, technology. But then why did we turn it? Why did we take an abrupt turn and turn it up? Side down, right? And We're what not it, making a transition to electric vehicles. We're getting them shoved down our nose. And, and there's reason to believe that ultimately, what we're calling a green alternative may not be that green. It's and we've not. discussed it quite a bit. So that's the whole thing. Is at the end of the day, I mean, you know what I've never seen is you know you can have you can easily have sort of miles per gallon. You know what the miles per gallon of your mm-hmm. car is, things like that. What is the the pollution per mile? You know what I mean? Like what what is the pollution per mile of a Tesla as opposed to nobody's a, ever thought an about an SUV that, as opposed to what I mean? People are always talking about guys driving big trucks and things like that. It's like well, what is what is their output? Let's go all the way back to when they're mining the lithium for the battery that goes in your tesla right what is that tesla's uh, environmental rating well, that goes right into this next story i've got <clears throat> heavier electric vehicles are causing safety and pollution problems believe this or not all right the progress automakers are made taking weight off vehicles over the past decade and they did they made windshields thinner. They made the metal thinner and lighter. The yeah, cardboard roof. Oh, yeah. The cardboard roof is quickly being erased by electric vehicles, jeopardizing safety and causing pollution. What automakers are learning about electric vehicles, veterans of Weight Watchers already know. It's hard to keep the pounds off once you've lost them. Well, and, and not to mention, what is <laughs> what is the big what is the big fight right now the big everybody's wanting to say they get the most they have the highest range right highest range how do i get higher range i get more battery what happens if i get more battery i add more weight yes right evs are posting eye-popping curb weights wiping out the lightweight weighting process automakers have made in the past decade you still got that thin windshield and that thin metal but now you got to have a thousand million pound battery in there that it's going to ruin all that. Well, and then you've got to feel you got to worry about the guys riding motorcycles. Absolutely, right? you're going to crash into one of them. You're going to knock them into the next county. The heavy batteries required to provide hundreds of miles of range are the culprit. The battery packed in a GM GMC Hummer electric oh, vehicle the Hummer, yeah. pickup and the SUV weighs 2,818 pounds, just 52 pounds fewer than the entire curb weight of the Chevrolet Cruze. The compact sedan that ended production in 2019. Yeah, they quit making that. No better example of the vehicle diet yo-yo can be found than the former, the former king of lightweighting, the aluminum body F-150. The, uh, the F-150 now weighs 7 zillion pounds. It weighs 6,800 pounds, the electric F-150. The 2012 steel-bodied F-150 Super Crew 4x4 pickup supported a curb weight of 5,586 pounds. An aluminum version replaced it in 2015 and shaved roughly 700 pounds off of that weight. Yet today's electric F-150 Lightning Crew ranges from 6,015 to 6,893 pounds depending on the battery pack, and as much as, much as 1,300 pounds more than the steel body pickup. So you just threw that out the window. The Hummer pickup and SUV lead the electric vehicle league with a curb weight of over 9,000 pounds, nearly 2,000 pounds more than the gargantuan original diesel-powered Hummer H1. 
General Motors Electric <laughs> Chevrolet Silverado, GMC Sierra, and Cadillac Escalade IQ, which share the Honda Hummer's underpinnings, that means the chassis, are also super heavyweights at about 8,500 pounds. I still remember, you know, when the Hummer first came out, do you remember who, who was responsible for the popularity of the Hummer? So Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, he, he was. He's the one that first brought the, the, the military Hummers. And uh, now the irony being now we're gone full circle. Now the new Hummers weigh as much as the old giant military Hummer used to weigh. Absolutely. If Absolutely. not more. I got to tell you the little story first. I got to, I just, you know how I am with politics and everything in car, in my car business. Carvana, Carvana, the much poo pooed company that didn't have their, didn't have all their titles in order, didn't have all their uh, license plates, and they were, you know, they got scolded and chastised and they got shut down in Illinois. Well, guess what just happened? Tell, tell me you can't get to every, every politician out there. Legislated, legislation supported by used vehicle retailer Carvana that codifies vehicle home delivery and other e-commerce sales procedures in Illinois was recently signed into law set to take effect January 1, 2024. All of a sudden, it's okay. In late July, Governor Pritzker signed Senate Bill 1896, which clarifies language about modern automotive retailing practices in the Illinois Vehicle Code. As signed, the bill amends that statute, statute to, attend, to add text clearly stating that licensed vehicle dealers are permitted to conduct sales activities, including collecting electronic signatures via the Internet. This, I don't think, is right. Carvana was one proponent of updating Illinois law because online sales and home delivery are critical to its business model. Let me just tell you something about that, Chuck. This collecting signatures via the Internet is poo. It's out and out poo. Okay. Dog poo. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because after you decide what car you want and you get into it, you want to negotiate the price, blah, 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 blah. And here I am. Now the F&I guy comes on. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get you this interest rate and blah, 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 and this and that, and the insurance and this and that. And the next thing you know, you've signed a bunch of stuff you didn't want. Right. There are some unscrupulous dealers that are going to use this to steal from you. Okay. I mean, that's just got, that's like saying, hey, uh, Jesse James, come on, rob our town. Our bank is vulnerable. Give me a break. This is crazy. Letting them call signatures via the Internet is the easiest way to use that signature from the Internet. You, any good hacker can move that signature to another piece of paper. It's an electronic signature. I don't even need to steal your signature Exactly. Anymore. I just need to make sure I know your, your, your address and phone number and maybe your birth date and social security number. Or Absolutely, and I got you. And you just gave all that to the F and I guy at this car at Carvana. Yeah, and he's just you know, and of course they're always they do all the business above board, right? That's why they got closed down in three different states for not. Oh well, we sold you a car. We'll get you that title sooner or later. It's coming. They're probably selling cars they didn't own. I don't even want to get into that. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. But I, well, I do, but I don't. I don't say anything about it. They. This, no, you can say it. There's been stories about them selling right. cars with questionable titles. Oh, and yeah, that. and rebuilts and just just uh, absolute junk. And then you're going to sign off on it no matter what because they have your Internet signature. And you sign it. Well, see, he said he accepted this car the way it is. No, I didn't. You told me you were going to fix this, this, and this. No, we didn't. You got our signature? No, but I've got yours. Come on. This is a this is a ripoff. Internet signatures, I, I'm telling you, should be left to, to the hospitals and the doctors' offices, and that's it. Just so I can pre-register, because I go there a lot, you know. But that's beside the point. Chuck, we got to talk. The regions of this country are not happy okay. with certain sales tactics and certain sales of the vehicles. They, you know, we talked about this earlier, you and I, where they don't have a viable, there's no viable 
uh, here, you can look at this real quick. This is a, a map of the cars, the, the states that do and the states that don't. The brown are four, EV, uh, no, the green are four e EV adoption electric vehicle, and the bottom are four not. So these are the people. <laughs> so generally it looks like the coasts are more EV friendly and the Midwest is not. Right, exactly. Well, it all depends. We, we talked about this. It's how you're going to use it. Does it fit your lifestyle? Does it does it make sense for you to own one of these? Is it going to be the right thing for you fit for your your needs? The nation's transition to electric vehicles is fracturing by region, and it is. While EV purchases are rising overall, adoption is declining in the states that already had the lowest rates, according to JD Power. So those people are the people that didn't really want it. They don't really don't want it now. Nationwide, 21% of consumers who have an electric vehicle option that match their model preference purchased an EV in the first half of this year, compared with 20% a year earlier. So it's up 1%. That's of the people that could find the right option. That, this, that's a very misleading stat because they still only account for about 7% of the sales. But at the state level, there's a glaring division between electric vehicle friendly and electric vehicle lagging states. In the bottom 10 states for electric vehicles, the price or the pace of adoption sunk 24% from a year earlier in the top 10 states. Pace of the adoption grew 1%. So the people that didn't want them, didn't want them, grew 1%, or yeah, they didn't buy them. And the, the adoption sunk 24%. They decided, I'm not buying them. And the only, the only one that went up, they went up 1% in 10 states. 